It's Wednesday, June 23rd, and the time for your body is today morning news update. The Ministry of Education has issued an appeal to all educators for assistance with its Bonks Back summer school program. In a statement late Tuesday, the ministry encouraged the current and retired teachers, as well as Erdiston College graduates, to sign up for the program in an effort to help primary school students who have lost critical learning time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The move comes after teachers' unions in the country all denied the ministry's request for their members to teach during the summer period. On Monday, President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepard, maintained that the program was inconsistent with teachers' terms and conditions of employment. Also important, he said, was the need for educators to get a break after months of grueling online and in-person teaching. Preliminary work is on the way to determine the best road solution for White Hill St. Andrew. The development comes more than seven years after a large chunk of the main road leading into the community collapsed following heavy rains. On Tuesday, Bobby Listody noticed experts with specialized equipment in the rural community conducting geotechnical work. Chief Technical Officer at the Ministry of Transport and Works, Philip Tudor, said, this will determine where the road should be located and what type should be constructed. He said that the process should be completed within the next few weeks. What we are doing is doing what we call boreholes. Boreholes is where we drill, um, I don't know, the 50, 100 feet deep to see what the soil profile is going to be like. Um, and it informs us then what type of, of, of structure we should put there. Um, at White Hill. Mm -hmm. Right, so it let us know how, like I said, what the soil type is like, and um, it, it allows us to determine if we should do a bridge or piles or whatever the solution. But that's not really, we are to be able to take another, I don't know, three weeks or so. Uh, once we get the soil samples, they'll be analyzed, and the engineer that would then come up with a, a, a solution as to what should be built at, at, uh, White, uh, at White Hill. If the road should go back in the same place that it was originally, or if it should go higher, or if it should go lower, right? So that's what that, that, um, that uh, exploratory work is going to determine. The World Bank will this week consider a request from Barbados for U.S. $100 million in exceptional financing. Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cadell, made the disclosure during Tuesday's sitting of the House of Assembly during debate on the company's Economic Substance Amendment Bill 2021. On Thursday of this week, we will go to the board of the World Bank to take an operation for what we call exceptional financing in the amount of 100 million US dollars. And sir, that didn't happen just so. This country for decades has been what the World Bank and the IMF call graduated. You know what I mean? What that means? They said to us, you're making enough GDP per capita, you don't need us anymore to meet your development goals. So go along about your business. And we had to make a strong case even before COVID, that the, the basis on which you are graduating us doesn't make any sense. And so we've put that operation together. And that goes this week to be considered by the board of the World Bank. A regional economist is not convinced that Barbados and other Caribbean countries have done enough over the years to build resilience to natural hazards. In fact, former president of the Caribbean Development Bank, Professor Compton Bourne, believes too much emphasis continues to be placed on reacting to natural disasters instead of building more resilient structures. He made the comments on Tuesday while taking part in the president's chat, the third session in the series of the CDB's annual meeting of the Board of Governors. For instance, uh, ensuring that the budgetary resources contain provisions for uh, ameliorating the harmful effects on the, uh, let us say, the less advantaged members of our societies. With respect to the natural hazard shocks, 
I don't think the region has done a very good job. Uh, we are still too heavily focused on relief and recovery and not sufficiently focused on building structures uh, which uh, minimize our vulnerability to the shocks. Uh, we, we, one has to think in terms of sea defenses, uh, our building codes, uh, our land settlement patterns, and, and things like that. We, we, we have really not significantly addressed those things. And I hope that 30 years from now, one will not be making the same kind of statement and, and, and go around the world uh, seeking funds for disaster, uh, relief and recovery. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. For news from the region, Guyana's president, Ofran Ali, has reportedly reached out to the international community for assistance to help flood-impacted residents. Gordon Mosley of New Source Guyana reports. As the country continues to assess the damages caused by one of the worst flood situations, the President Ifan Ali has started to reach out for international assistance to bring relief to those affected. The President today met virtually with the President of the Islamic Development Bank, Dr. Bandar Hajar, and his team to discuss intervention measures and the bank's support in wake of the recent floods across Guyana. The President pointed out that the need for aids to farmers to restore their productive capacity, support for drainage and irrigation initiatives, and further strengthening of the national drainage system are among the needed relief. In a release, the President said discussions were also centered on assistance for the affected hinterland and riverine communities. Those areas, he explained, depend predominantly on the mining and forestry sectors. President Ali noted the need for critical interventions for the restoration of river dams, hinterland roads and bridges, many of which were destroyed and remain submerged. And finally on the international front, top U.S. officials say that the U.S. will not meet the president's goal of having 70% of American adults receiving at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. More from Reuters TV. During a Tuesday press briefing, White House COVID-19 senior advisor Jeffrey Zients said significant progress had been made in the U.S. vaccination efforts but a few additional weeks will be needed to hit the target for Americans over the age of 18. We have met the president's 70% goal for all U.S. adults 30 and over. And based on today's estimates, we're on track to hit the 70% target for those aged 27 and, one, and over once the data for the July 4th holiday weekend is fully in. We think it'll take a few extra weeks to get to 70% of all adults with at least one shot, with the 18 to 26 year olds factored in. Zeit said 16 states and Washington, D.C. have delivered at least one shot to 70% of adults 18 and older. The Biden administration has been campaigning for more Americans to get their shots, but roadblocks remain, like ongoing racial imbalances in vaccination rates, the new Delta virus variant, and vaccine hesitancy, especially among young adults. The reality is many younger Americans have felt like COVID-19 is not something that impacts them and they've been less eager to get the shot. However, with the Delta variant now spreading across the country and infecting younger people worldwide, it's more important than ever that they get vaccinated. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp.
We also on Aizumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.